Hello, we're here at the 5G Transport and Network Strategies event in New York City. My name is Phil Harvey. I'm with Light Reading. Uh, Ericsson is one of the sponsors of the event, and joining me from Ericsson is Michael. Uh, Michael, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. And uh, so first of all, give us a little bit of, de uh, of information about uh, who you are and what your role is inside of Ericsson. Sure. Uh, Mike Godogis, I've been working in the transport area for, I think, the last 25, 30 years. So I've been there from day one. Uh, my main role is working with U.S. carriers to build the best transport network, but really helps to create a superior 5G experience. That's a that's something we all want for sure. Exactly. Um, one of the discussions in here is uh, you know about the uh, evolution of network architecture as as uh, you know 5G takes hold and and becomes uh, and, and evolves itself. Mm -hmm. um, one of the questions I have about this space is uh, cloud RAN and mm -hmm. what the impact of cloud RAN is on the transport network. Sure, um, as one of my colleagues uh, highlighted earlier. The reality is that there is no such thing as a greenfield radio network. Right? Sure. In other words, you have to deal with the deployed radios. I think in the US, Ericsson has deployed over a million radios. A lot of them still run the traditional SIPRI interface. Uh -huh. Now, if you're looking for cloud run, the cloud run server, you have an Ethernet network interface card. Therefore, right. you're going to need some kind of gateway element to convert basically the traditional SIPRI into the new involved SIPRI interface. Okay, so it's, yeah, so there's got to be a, a, a new hardware element, new technology element, and it's got to work completely harmoniously with the network exactly. that's, that's already correct. established. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at, at what what are the implications, I guess, or how does it change, uh, you know, your consideration for uh, uh, for front hall mm -hmm. when, when, when you're trying to accommodate, you know, this, uh, this new technology? Right, yeah, so the, so first of all, like, cloud to run, you can deploy it in a distributed fashion, mm -hmm. or you can deploy it in a centralized fashion, right? And either of those, basically, deployments will have different implications, right? So if you start with the first one, so let's say I have a traditional distributed uh, radio access network, meaning that historically, the basement's at the side, now I'm going to put a cloud brand server there. In that case, I want a device, what we call a frontal gateway, what takes the CPU radio interface and converts them into e so I can connect it either to, for example, an NR, right, a video server. At the same time, I also need to take care of all the inconnectivity on that side, like, for example, all the co coordination traffic between the servers and, let's say, maybe an LTE baseband, right? And finally, also important, the synchronization. Now, if you're talking about centralized cloud RAN, then you get another factor into your equation that I have now at the antenna side, I'm converting all the radios into eSIPRI. Right. And the benefit with conversion is that I can basically typically aggregate the whole macro into a single 100 gig Ethernet pipe. Mm. Okay. So then I just transport it back to the hub. And the advantage of conversion is that after I convert, I can connect directly in the cloud rent servers. I don't need a, let's call it a bookended solution, what you would have for radio for Ethernet encapsulation, for example, right? Yeah. Now, one thing is absolutely critical is that besides latency, which is very, uh, I'd say, uh, critical, uh, timing and synchronization is is really what we notice in real deployment, yeah. the limiting factors. Right. And it has to do that we used to have a pretty big, uh, let's say, budget for the backhaul network. Uh -huh. And now I'm looking actually at the frontal domain where I have, let's say, 400 nanoseconds between the basement and the radio, but now there's a whole transport network in between. Oh boy. So yeah. now you have to make sure that that's designed. So really end-to-end right. -end design and knowing the requirements is absolutely critical for good deployments. Yeah, that makes sense uh, because there's there's no no overhead anymore for latency, yeah. you know, in the transport network. Yeah. I mean, you've been doing this a, a while and the technology's evolved yeah. quite. Do you think it's more, uh, uh, I'm curious what you think of it, is it, is it uh, becoming more complex or, or, or more simplified <laughs> as, as, as we go? Um, it's definitely uh, becoming more challenging. And yeah. uh, I mean, I, uh, to be frank, being also a RAN vendor yeah. allows us to have a very keen insight in right. what the new requirements are. Uh, for example, with 5G, we know coordination is getting more critical. 
So, and then also now when you're rolling out, let's say, mid-band uh, uh, sites now, let's say on antenna side, how do I coordinate with the low-band side somewhere else? So, how is the interaction? So, yeah, right. it's not about a single type of track anymore, it's yeah. how to accommodate multiple RAN architectures multiple interfaces right. with multiple requirements in the same physical network. And right. I, I think that's the challenge. So you really need to understand yeah. how everything works together. Yeah, and you, and you have to have that end-to-end -end, end -end end view yeah. certainly helps with that because you're not you're not uh, just looking at one piece in a silo. That's correct. Uh, well, Michael, thanks so much for, uh, uh, for being here today and thanks to Ericsson for sponsoring this. Thanks for having me.